Hey friends, welcome back. Hope you are doing well. So today we are going to learn about the the basic, the very important part of our postings when we while we go for posting. We usually do not find this. So I am going to cover here the basic surgical instrument. Usually the student, usually student do not do not get chance to learn this. So I will be covering the basic instrument surgical parts so that you cannot don't don't find it difficult, right? So it's it's a very long and lengthy part. So I will be covering do two different parts. So in the first part we are going to learn about the basic surgical instruments. These are the things you can see here that the OT you have, you have n number of uh, instrument to learn. But the basic instrument we are going to learn here is uh, the, the things I am going to taught you, right? So just uh, for going through the uh, before uh, the learning instrument, we can see here these are the things uh, you can see inside the uh, your operation theater. So this is the this trial trolley hole is prepared before while before going for the surgery. This is only prepared by a very trial person. The nursing staff is used to uh, prepare all these things before the surgical part. Right, you can see here. So now uh, going with the modification. So number one thing we do is the we go for the Rampley's sponge holding forceps. Number one, number one thing we do before starting our surgery is the painting. The painting draping is very important part. So before uh, for, for the painting we use this Rampley's sponge holding forceps. Another forceps we have a Foster sponge holding forceps. Right. So the main difference is here is it is little bit elongated with the transfer serrations. Right. You can see here. But the Foster is totally circular with the transfer serrations. So not much difference, but uh, usually um, sometimes the examiner may ask. So I'm just giving you a extra edge, right? So another Foster we have a transfer Foster, same looking, have same as transfer serration, but it is used for transferring the sterile instruments in the inside the OR. So it is you can see here no, uh, you can see here there is no and this ratchet or lock, and it is open from one side this is the transfer process then we have a, uh, after painting we use the drape the parts so for the drape we use surgical draping try surgical draping we have already prepared uh, the whole sheet or the different different parts so for uh, clamping these different uh, drapes we are using this back horse towel clip this back horse towel clip another we have this shellless or doyens towel clip um, which have a pinch lock action so we use this this clips and we have a back cost towel clips also. Okay. Then this is the cheaters for which you are you have usually find inside your ward postings and ward rounds when you have a senior resident while doing dressings. They used to say to transfer this uh, forceps sometimes to pass the forceps or any kind of dressing materials. So you have used this cheaters for The very important thing is this part is sterile because it is usually dip inside the glass sterile uh, surgical solution in the inside the glass bottles. And with this part, usually we use only touch this. We never touch this part because we usually dip inside the sterile solution, right? So now starting with our different different categories of instruments, we have a, number one is the cutting dissecting instruments. So very important are the surgical blades. We have very uh, important surgical blades. So number one point you can find here is the 11 number uh, 11 number number 11 surgical blades uh, for giving the stab incisions while doing the incision drainage procedures. Then we have 15 number blade which we use to uh, do the uh, small uh, giving fine incisions in, inside like we are doing thyroid surgery or any facial surgery. We use this uh, 15 number because they are very small belly and used for delicate incisions. Then we have a number 22 number which have a very large long uh, belly for giving the large laparotomy incisions. So usually we use these three kind of surgical blades and with the surgical blades we have a surgical hand, uh, this, these blade handles also known as a barred buckles handles, the BP handle, barred buckles handle and this is the uh, uh, the method how we put the blades in the handle. So we used to, sometimes we, uh, we ask the students, so you must just have to have the knowledge, never hold your blade with the with your hand, bare hands, right? Remember all this. Then we have different different grips of holding the this. Then we have a BP handles. And the BP handles are number seven number, number three number, and the four number. And these are the methods of holding the things, right? So you just go through this. Then we have a kidney tray for holding the organ structure, collecting specimen, and for transferring the sharp instrument. Never pass the instrument with bare hands. I told you the sharp instrument are very you can injure the uh, any kind of surgeons or any kind of uh, staff standing there. So we usually pass the style uh, the st sharp instrument in these kidney tray. So we have this kidney tray. And the such you can find out this the galley pod we use. Uh, usually we have seen for uh, putting the this style uh, this bitter deep solution for painting before painting. Right. So just going through the basic uh, parts of all 
instrument we have we have this finger valve the, the number the thing you can see here is a finger valve In, inside we place the fingers then we have a ratchet here the lock part is known, known as a ratchet there then we have a shaft that is the shank part the shaft part then we have a joint we have a joint this is the box joint this is the screw joint you can see here the screw here then we have a blades here the blade or jaws and we define accordingly the for which the purpose it is used so starting of cutting uh, process we have number one is a mayo scissor the number one mayo scissor little bit heavy bulky and the broad handles for cutting the uh, uh, for uh, tough structures and uh, tough and uh, large structures we use the mayo scissor sometimes also we use for cutting the sutures then we have a medzen bombs here you can see the long handles with the uh, long sharp uh, and the thin blades for cutting the delicate tissue structures we use the medzen bombs scissors you can see the difference here the long blades broad blades and the thin blades then we have a macindo scissor you can see we, can, we also have macindo scissor same uh, the same use it for for cutting the delicate structures uh, we have a suture cutting scissor also we have separate uh, suture cutting scissor actually this is a uh, this is a very thin part uh, the end part pointed part for cutting the sutures but sometimes i already told you we can use a mayo scissor also then in the clamping and occluding instrument we have a kelly's hemostat number one you know, uh, process is for occluding the small vessels and holding the tissues we have a kelly's uh, hemostatic process it can, it can be curved it can be straight never confused with this if the straight is there then what about the curved part the, it can be curved the shape can be different no matter about the shape right we just go through the concept right we have kreis process uh, kreis hemostatic process and kelly's hemostatic process for the, just for knowledge the kreis is having a transversation throughout the blades but in the kelly's we have a partial the half of the part of this only transversated right then we have a different different process of hair for holding the uh, artery then we have a mosquito kreis uh, kelly's tonsils and the pubes then we have a curved mosquito hemostatic process you can see here for uh, hemostating or uh, for ligating or clamping the small delicate vessels in the uh, fine surgeries like thyroid surgeries right this is fully serrated they have same forceps mosquito forceps straight forceps there is spencer was a straight artery forceps for holding the uh, arteries in the deep cavities and then we have a cockers forceps here you can see the cockers forceps here this cockers forceps have a have a tooth in the at the end for holding and um, maintain the position there for uh, gram clamping the large tough structures so we have this cockers forceps then we have lihase right angle forceps for uh, clamping or occluding the pedicle when we are ligating the pedicle area like in the mrm or any kind of uh, resection and anastomotic surgery then we use this uh, right angle forceps for passing the sutures inside there and the deep cavities then we have debicki's shatten skis forceps you can see here the longitudinal serrations here so it is non traumatic so in non traumatic part we use to for the vascular clamp it's a vascular clamp we use for the vascular uh, clamping the vascular structures and for controlling the blood flow inside the vessels then we have daffin back bolder clamp same it is a, has a pinch lock action so it is used for the clamping the vascular structures then we have a donin's intestinal occlusion clamp this is an intestinal occlusion clamp we have a non traumatic longitudinal serrations throughout the length for uh, clamping the bowel when we are anastomoting the bowel so we use this for the holding these structures and when then we use to suture this right then we have pairs gastro occlusion clamp same for uh, have a non traumatic longitudinal serrations and then we use for clamping the gastric part gastric ball then in grasping and holding instrument we have a <coughs> alice tissue forceps this alice tissue forceps i have a tooth at the end for holding the tough structures and place and uh, make uh, and sheets and fissures then we have back of forceps this back of forceps is for for holding the tubular structure this is a very important criteria uh, for identifying this and we are holding for tubular structure like appendix we have we have uh, ductus deferens we have ureter we have fallopian tubes so we are used for uh, holding the tubular structures then forceps sponge stick forceps we will don't ask this then we devos lung holding forceps the devos lung holding forceps this is also have transverse uh, serrations with the, uh, which is non traumatic and used for holding the spongy lung forceps lung tissues then we have a plain thumb forceps for holding the uh, fine uh, delicate structures for while we are doing the any kind of suturing or stitching the area any kind of removing any particles on and other things from the cavities then we have one into two tooth forceps 
one and two means we have a single tooth here you can see here this single tooth and the jaw like structure for holding this tooth inside so this is one and two same we have two we can have two into three so if i have two tooth with this thing you can the another thing you can see here you can you have usually seen this inside your dissection once you are in the first year you have for use for dissecting the uh, or cadavers but we use here for holding the tough structures and the things like for while we are doing the suturing so we have ferris mid tooth fossa which have a 2 into 3 this is 2 into 3 ferris or also known as a rat tooth fossa right then we have debicki's fossa this is a we have a longitudinal fission which is non traumatic for holding the when we are ligating any kind of vessels so we use this debicki's fossa for holding it in the, inside the in the place right then we have russian fossa which have a club shape this uh, circular structure at the end for holding the lung lymph nodes like small nodular structures like right? so we use this russian fossa which is non traumatic right then we have axillary tissue fossa uh, we have you can see a very thin blades uh, with the small tooth here which we use for uh, holding the like uh, delicate structures while we are doing suturing of the like eyelids face face and the small delicate structures and suturing then we have a needle holder in even needle holder and it's very important the needle holder in a general surgery we use this kind of needle holder this castor vagus needle holder usually we use in the ct wheel by the ct wheel people because it is very small because they have very small like 80 they use uh, in like the small small sutures you know and this needle holder will crush that needle so we use this castor vagus in the ct wheel people by the ct wheel people for holding the delicate structures then we have a needle holder we are the needle holder which we use here is the Haggis needle holder. We have the Haggis Mayo Haggis needle holder, which have a longitudinal serration. So you can see here this longitudinal groove here. This groove inside is for holding the needle in the place. So this has this is very important for identifying the needle holder here. Open this and you can see there. Then we have a this Jardins this gallstone fossa for for removing the stones from inside from inside when we are doing the open CBD exploration or from the gallstone when we are removing the gall from gallbladder stones from the gallbladder. Then we have a open fossa for uh, for removing the placenta which is inside the ut uterus, or sometimes we also use for removing the stones from the gallbladder. Then we have retracting exposition instrument. Very important thing you have to remember is that these instruments are identified by the blades, not by the handles. The handles can be of any shape, so we don't have to go for the confused with the handles because handles are different. I have seen some different handles. We have to go with the blades for identifying this. We use this blade. So number one is a cannulas navy retractor. The full name is cannulas navy retractor, and this uh, structures we uh, usually the retractor usually used in the uh, like superficial structures when we are retracting the superficial structures like skin, strap muscles. So in thyroid surgery we use this cannulas navy retractor. The one thing you can note here that we have a space here. This space provide the uh, to pass this provide this the space is for passing the sutures and any kind of thread or like uh, you know, structures when we use for the ligating the. vessels so this are very good thing so that it can pass the ligature then we have a cannulas uh, sernis retractor here same here structures same for passing the structure and also it is used for holding the uh, retracting the superficial uh, structures and then we have a debus retractor the very have a different different blades it can be thin it can be broad so we have a debus retractor here. handle can be of any shape i told you already so it is used for retracting the solid hollow vessel of organs A solid or hollow vessel organs, but like sometimes with livers, we use to retract the livers with these. And then we have Morris retractor. Morris retractor have a broad, this broad blade with a single handle. Then this is used for retracting the liver, like solid organs, like livers. And then we have Langbach retractor here for retracting the. This is also known as the right angle retractor for holding the. Uh, uh, when we are holding the small uh, area for like we are uh, dissecting for the like we are going for surgery like appendix or any kind of invasive surgery. Then we use this Langbach retractor. Then we have Doyne retractor. Once we are giving the laparotomy incision, then we have then we are retracting this abdominal wall with this abdominal wall retractor, also known as abdominal wall retractor or the Doyne retractor. We use this Doyne retractor. Then we have Jaws Jaws thyroid retractor when we are doing the thyroid surgery. So it is this this is self retaining. Once we have locked this part here in the in the place, then it used to stay there. This is the for the self retaining retractor, right? Then we have Allison's lung retractor for retracting the uh, spongy structures of the lung. Then we have Backen's Wittlander's retractor for also known as the mastoid retractor for mastoid surgeries. 
Then we have Balfour's self retaining retractor, abdominal retractor, used for pelvic surgery. When we are doing the pelvic surgery, this is a very important retractor. The three different blades. This is completely mobile, and this part is mobile, and this part is sometimes fixed. Then we have Caspar retractor. This Caspar or the hinge skin retractor is for retracting the skin, very small, uh, delicate structures. And the skin will be usefully seen in the MRM surgery for raising the flaps, right? Then we have a Humphrey's knife, this Humphrey's knife and this, and this blade for going for the, when we are going for split skin grafting, when we are taking the graft, we use this dermatome, electric dermatome, this dermatome for taking the skin graft, right? So these are the things, uh, we will continue in this video in our next second part, till then uh, subscribe and please share this 